Hello everybody and welcome back. As you can see, all the pigeons are now in the loft, but they've made a bit of a mess overnight. So let me do a little bit of cleaning, and then we can have a closer look at them. Okay, well it's a little bit cleaner in here, so I'll show you what I've done with the loft, and then we can take a look at the pigeons. So this is the hen side, the breeding hens. They've all moved themselves up into the aviary section. But I've put a set of perches there, a temporary set of perches here, and a brand new set of perches over here. I'll just move back this way. Eventually, the birds still aren't very happy with me being in here. But anyway, let's carry on. Eventually this back wall is gonna have breeding boxes. This set of perches is gonna go, and it's gonna be replaced with another tall one like this. And then if we move next door into the cock section... You can see that I haven't yet lined this back wall, but I will do it. The set of perches which is currently on this side wall will go back up once it's been lined. The other set of, the other set of perches from the hen side will go here, just down, be down below the aviary section. And then another one of the tall boxes We'll go here, and again, on the back wall, we'll have breeding boxes. It is also a little bit dark in the loft here. I'm thinking of putting in some skylights and maybe even some electric lights just to get a bit more, just to make it a bit brighter in here. Anyway, let's take a look at the pigeons, but before we do, I would like to thank everyone who is a regular viewer of the channel, and especially the Patreon supporters. You guys have made it possible for me to have a loft like this, so I thank you very much for that. Uh, I do actually have a few Patreon benefits, so there's a link in the description if you'd like to check that out. But let's have a look at the pigeons. Now for all you guys who always think that I only keep coloured birds, and I don't have racing pigeons, we have a blue bar there, there's a blue bar there, a blue checker, Another blue bar in the corner. There's a lot of birds here that you guys haven't seen in the past, but now that they're all here, you'll get to see them more frequently. Here's one that you guys haven't seen for a long time and he's gonna hide behind the back. It's our little tiger grizzle. I might pull him out and then we can have a look. So this is a young little tiger grizzle cock and he's not very tame and he does not like being held so I don't think we're going to get a very close look at him if you've been watching the channel for a while you might remember that I bred this guy last year at my old house his parents were both tiger grizzles and I'm pretty sure he's a homozygous tiger grizzle that's why he's so white I haven't done any breeding tests to confirm that yet but if I am right that he is a homozygous tiger it means that all his babies will be tiger grizzles which is a bit of a good thing because, in general, I'm not actually super impressed with this guy. First of all, he is just way too white. He has the white flight feathers as well, which indicate that he has a lot of pied. Which again, is something that I didn't really want in my Tiger Grizzle project. And then just in general, he's just not a super nice handling pigeon. So I'm not really expecting any superstars to come from this guy. But being hopefully a homozygous tiger, he will produce me a few tiger little babies that I can improve in the future by pairing him to better and better pigeons. And if you've seen the Tiger Rizzle How to Breed video, you know it's a dominant, it's a combination of two dominant traits, which means breeding them isn't too difficult. So although this guy isn't great, having him around gives us a little bit to work with going forward. Now back in here with the rest of the cockbirds, there are a few birds in here you guys have seen in the past. That's our little opal grizzle. And there's the red checker cock. He was over here towards the end of last year breeding. Who else do we have? So other red opal. He'll be breeding again soon in the recessive opal spread project. We have this old guy. The black cock who carries brown. There's our half side of mosaic. There's also the white birds who we picked up last year. We'll, we'll be breeding from them later on in the year. Down there, it's a 
a little old brown bar cock. And of course, we have some blue bars, some blue checkers. Some of the normal coloured race birds that I do actually have, but you guys haven't seen too much of in the past. Anyway, let's move over to the hen side. There are a few less hens than there are cocks, but I still have a few too many in here. Anyway, let's have a look at them. Unfortunately, the hens aren't as calm as the cocks were. So this one in the back corner is a white, and this one, closer to me, is a reduced grizzle. And it's amazing how when you combine two lightning modifiers, so grizzle and reduced, you can produce something that's quite similar to white without there being any white genes in the pigeon. This one here is an Andalusian. You might remember I had the Andalusian with the injured wing in the past. This is actually her daughter. Who else do we have? We have our Extreme Dilute down the back. I'll do a video on this one in the future. That one is a blue checker, believe it or not. It's not a yellow, it's not a red. It's an Extreme Dilute blue checker. We have some more racing pigeons. We have our original opal hen. And she, although being a somewhat rare colour, is a genuine racing pigeon. She's actually flown a couple of 700 kilometer races in the past, but she's getting a bit old now. She's about eight years old. Anyway, there's an interesting one up here. Oh, there's our stepper hen climbing the wire. But this one is a little crest, so I'll pull her out. You can have a look at her. All right, here she is. This is a young hen, and just like the uh, tiger grizzle, she's not used to being handled at the moment, so she's a bit flighty. But she has a nice little crest. And it was a bit of a surprise when we bred this one. I didn't know that her parents carry crests and I wasn't expecting to get a crest from them. So it was a nice little surprise. If you look at her from the top, you can see it's not a very good crest. It's only about half formed, but it was a nice little surprise. This one comes from a long distance racing pigeon family. And I have never had much success in the long distance races, but it is something I would like to have a bit of a go at. So that's why I picked these ones up. And I am hoping we get some success out of them. This one's from an Australian long distance family, and you might, I don't know if you can tell just in the hand, but these are a lot smaller than the European style pigeons. So as I've mentioned in a video in the past, Australian racing pigeons, or Australian pigeons in general, were cut off from imports for a long time. Imports were banned in the 40s, and they weren't allowed again until the early 90s. So there was a long time where Australian pigeons were genetically isolated from the rest of the world. And they developed into a bit of a different bird than the European ones. And one of the main things you can see is that the Australian birds are quite a bit smaller. Anyway, it's a bit of an interesting curiosity. This one grew a little crest. I have thought about developing a breed of, I've thought about calling them ornamented homers. Pigeons with the crest, with the frill, and with the grouse legs. But that might be a project for the future. Anyway, I'll put this one back. And let's go outside and have a look at the breeding boxes. So, like I've said in the past, I am almost finished with these outside breeding boxes. The birds that are in them at the moment will be the last pairs in them, and then I'll take these down, and I'll put some nicer ones inside the loft. But, let's have a look in here. These, this project will get its own video soon, but this guy actually carries Barless. And this is the hen I've got him with at the moment. She's a very well-bred racing pigeon. She does have a bit of pied in her, which is not something that I really want in the Barless project. But at the moment I'm just trying to put the best quality racing genetics into the project that I can. But like I said, these guys will get their own video, so let's have a look elsewhere. In here we have my little favourite old boy, and his silver hen. Their eggs are due to hatch this week, so hopefully we'll get a nice little red out of them, and we can carry on the yellow project. He's my favourite, this old boy. And then we have the reds, and it's been a long time since you've seen these guys. Last time you saw them they were just getting their rings, and they've grown up a lot since then. I'm actually really happy with the colour of these guys. This one has the one white feather in its tail, and the other one appears to be just about pure red. And I know they will change in the molt, but the last round had a fair bit more white on them, even in the nest. 
so I'm pretty impressed with these guys. It's a little bit of a shame that I'm not planning on keeping them. These ones are going to a friend of mine. But hopefully the next round, which I will be keeping, will come out just like this. Anyway guys, that's about it for today. I might just put the camera in the loft for a couple of minutes and you can watch the birds in the loft without me. They're a bit calmer that way. So if you want to watch that, make sure you stick around. But otherwise, thank you for watching. And like I said, thanks for the support, especially the Patreon supporters. I have left a link down below. If you want to check it out, please feel free. I really do appreciate it. Well, that's all for today, guys. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 